Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. As I always say, if you are new here, thank you for turning up. Please give us a like and subscribe. It's how we grow. We've been growing a lot on the YouTube channels and people that are leaving reviews on Spotify. Thank you so much. Hopefully you're leaving five stars because we are a five-star show, I hope. Um, but do appreciate the support. And if you've come back again, as I always say, I love you. Now, uh, another big episode today because we keep probably of late, the last few episodes we've done, they've probably been like six-month waits to get the individuals on. But <laughs> finally... Really dodging your calls. For yeah, dodging months. my calls. But finally we have... Uh, uh, the St Kilda man, uh, Mason Wood, on the show. So appreciate you coming in, uh, mate. Thanks for having me. Finally got here. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Well, I reckon I was going to say, I feel like it was mid-season. We opened Dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was. it's a busy year and we were under the pump and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> probably a bit of busy time for me to get in. And um, yeah, I think we had some chats around the group about trying to keep everything <laughs> yeah. in the house and focusing on the one side. So I said later on in the year, I'll be yeah, but that's happy good. to jump on. Part of me liked that because I was like, the Saints are, Saints are lasered in here. Yeah. Like coming into the back end of the season because some it's starting to change now. And obviously, we kind of spoke off air with some footy clubs. Once you build a rapport, they sort of have the trust to have some of their players on and stuff. But at the same time, I'm a Saints fan. Like, and this is going to be contentious on this show because I know I've done a lot of Collingwood content. Um, and I don't know what your view is on like splitting teams that you support because I wasn't a big believer in it, but I, I've been like, that's who I am now. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, <laughs> obviously been at North Melbourne. So I've got oh, more, true. I've got more, and it's not so much teams, but guys that you've had invested interest in, yes. you always want to see go, well. Wow. So there's so many guys at North Melbourne that I'm still hugely invested I can imagine. in. Guys that I've lived with, um, Josh Simkin, obviously captain now, and Nick Larkey and Luke McDonald, and a lot of guys that I still played with, like a lot of them have been culled since, <laughs> yeah, since yeah. I, I left. <laughs> I think, I think there might be 15 or something left since <laughs> I was there, but um yeah, I think if you've got you've met the guys, so you've got a little bit more invested interest. Like if you've had a lot of Collingwood guys in, then yeah, you're going to want to see them go well. Well, yeah, correct. Yeah, like so I've, I've watched them probably sometimes more than the Saints because of like my mates. I would at least physically go to the grounds because like yeah. they call me like, "Oh, you want tickets and stuff." But like Saints, I was like 1997, 98 going to the grand finals. Yeah, there you go. Or like with, with going home crying in tears <laughs> yeah, in my yeah. dad's arms and shit. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, die hard. But so I was actually, so I actually called my dad today. I'm like, we're having Mason Wood on the show. He's like, oh, he's a fucking good player. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you go. That's from the old man. He loves you. Um, you speaking of, you mentioned North Melbourne. You obviously came into that footy club. Were you, before you were there, you were a Geelong boy? Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, Geelong supported the whole way through. So played Saints in the uh, 2009 with Yeah, Geelong. it was. Yeah, Scarlet Coat, Topo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, had all that going up and then got into the um, AFL system, drafted with pick 41 to um, to North Melbourne. I actually had, <laughs> talking with Lenny Hayes, just Lenny Hayes. Yeah, yeah. just uh, I was actually going to bring him up today. Yeah, yeah. Love Lenny. Um, now nah, talking about like draft stories and that kind of thing and um, yeah, I had like a little funny anecdote because obviously it's going on in the minute and just um, getting too ahead of yourself and throwing a party. And <laughs> in hindsight, that would party on the night of the draft I had. And in hindsight, you go like, I was being told by all these clubs and, you know, you're thinking you're going to go whatever pick. And I, I thought I was going like 15 to 20 and oh, ended up really? going pick 41. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with 80 people. Oh, no. Stressing my head off and then eventually got picked up. So that was... Um, long time ago now, Didn't, but what Lenny Lenny was a pretty high draft pick too, wasn't he? Spoke to him. I mean, forty is really not that high. It's like the forty first no, no. best player in I the think, country. Yeah, by yeah. The, I think I was almost you know round I mean? three, so it wasn't. And like, you probably could be better than that pick. It's just like, like I think with Daniel Curtin, he ended up getting pick ten or something, but he's one of the best in the draft. Yeah, it's just because of by positions and yeah. what, I mean, what clubs I have. I feel like clubs have got a much better idea of what they're getting, and the top ten seem to be. They, I feel like they speak a lot more, but. 10, 15 years ago, mm. you, you have, Lenny was talking about guys in his draft that got picked ahead of him and never played a game. Yeah, and that's you go, crazy. Like, I don't feel like that happens so much anymore because there's so much due diligence and the amount of recruiters and all that kind of stuff that yeah. are involved are just crazy. Yeah, what's um what's crazy to me now, I don't know if it was like this back in, was it 2012 you got drafted because we're the same age, which is the year I would have been drafted if I was stuck at AFL. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But um, is how much people know now about the draft? Like not just journos, but I'm seeing like AFL content creators. They're like, well, I watched this kid last night. He did a phantom draft. And I reckon he got every pick right. I'm like, hey, he's not, he's never spoke to one of the clubs. Big footy, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's <laughs> insane. Like how yeah. these people are doing this now. Yeah, like honestly. Was it like that back then for you? Um, 
Well, no, because no, people <laughs> thought I was going top 20 and True. went big 41 True. or whatever. So had no freaking clue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think because it's so locked in and they're mm. like, what's the point of trying to guess when it's – I think there's probably still a bit of up in the air once you get outside this because it's split in two nights and there's mm. probably a few more moving pieces and people will trade up draft picks and that kind of thing. But I think the first 15 picks would be pretty locked in and everyone would have a really good idea because yeah. I guess because they – get most of the kids there on the night, you want as few kids not to get picked up, like yeah. not there to, and don't get picked up as possible because that would just be yeah. horrific. Yeah, that's great. There was a guy from GWS, I think he went pick 12. He, he, bought, he was like, uh, I think they did a huge celebration for him, but he didn't think he was getting drafted or something. Like it was polar opposite to what you had. He yeah. went high and didn't yeah, expect yeah, anything yeah. and they had a massive party. Yeah. Oh, it's, mate, because it, it's like one club just sees something that they really like and they yeah. go like, I know the kid that we've picked up with our first pick's a great runner, which suits yeah. the way that we play and the way that we want to go forward. So it's just what, you know, one team thinks and it's just somebody's opinion at yeah, the end that's of the true. day. What was, um, I'm, I'm interested to know because obviously on theme, drafts, drafts happening as we sort of speak and when this episode's out, it might be a bit firm, more firmed up. But, like, what's it like going into a new footy club at that age and, like, that sort of initial period? Because I imagine it's pretty – be pretty fucking daunting. Well, I remember – so, North Melbourne every year, which was great. Soft cap doesn't allow you to do this anymore because it's been cut since COVID. But we went to Utah every year. So, it would oh, be yeah. just – unbelievable experience looking back it was so hard but you're just like oh my god i would kill to go back on one of those so they, trips that, that stuff doesn't happen anymore those yeah, overseas so footy trips I, yeah it was uh i think it's been cut by about a third so like the soft caps really straight and already stretched within the football club oh, and now those sort of trips i think become you know eventually the soft cap will come back and all that kind of thing but at least for the next few years, they won't be able to do it because it's just like there's half a million dollars that's just out yeah. of the soft cap for three weeks and it's it's a great experience and a great bonding experience. But yeah, so anyway, my uh, when I got drafted, I, I didn't have a passport. So I just had to spend three days trying to get a passport and in and eventually got it. And then I think I got drafted on the Thursday on, on the Monday, I was off to Utah. <laughs> so, so you fly over with the guys that you've been drafted with, obviously, but yeah. And then so you don't go with the whole footy team? They're already there. Oh, so, you're, so you're coming in. Jeez. You're coming in. And it's just all all ahead of you and um, it's all exciting. And then everybody's like, the thing over there is everybody's pretty cooked. They're pretty sleep de deprivated. Like yeah. they've they've gone for, to America, everyone's jet lagged. And then you're getting up at 6 a.m. to then go run and, oh. and exercise for four hours. So everyone's not in a great mood. Like oh. it, those, ca <laughs> those camps have broken guys like to right. the point where guys are getting biffs and oh, it's just, they're super hard and super draining mentally because yeah. you're just not sleeping as well as you would because you're sleeping at altitude as well, which I was gonna is even harder. I going to say altitude, the training would so be- So you're sleeping at like, uh, I think it's 3,000 meters or something like that. So you're just like, Oh, that might be too much, but something like that. Anyway, it's super hard to, to sleep and you're just not getting the quality. Um, yeah. And then obviously, yeah, the jet lag and all that. So guys by the end of the three-week camp are pretty ready to get pretty, home. Yeah. Did you – what did, – actually, on altitude training, I did altitude training once and I remember feeling a little bit weird when I was there. Like it was a little bit tougher, but it was more when I came back home that I realized how fit fit it got me. Yeah, yeah, Was so, there significant benefits in yeah, that? Yeah. So we do – I think it's minimum like three weeks to get the increased red blood cells. This is getting a bit scientific. But, <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, scientists on this yeah, show. Yeah, Approved, yeah. guys. Increased red blood cell count. Yeah. Um, so then – the hard work actually gets done when you get back ah. because the idea is that you've got this increased red blood cell count for X amount of period of time. So we used to go, they used to be the most hard camps you'd <laughs> yeah. ever do oh, without really? swearing. And then you'd come back and that next three weeks before Christmas would just be even harder because oh. you've got to get the benefit. Otherwise, it's it's wasted. So, Yeah. That pre-Christmas used to be, and kids don't know, like pre-Christmas is now two freaking weeks. Yeah, like, what, what, why uh, is that shifted? Like what's the perspective uh, on that? It was in the, I think, yeah, the AFL players obviously thought that it was a too long a pre-season and if everybody's in the same boat, it sort of doesn't really matter what time you come back, but clubs are now Good pushing point. back because it's like it's too short a time to get guys prepared and kids coming in, we need time to teach them the game plan and all that kind of stuff. So like in years gone past, I was in Utah in October, like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it was like October 27th in my first or second. So that's second like, year. that's a, that's a dev, the first of four you play has just gone back, haven't they? Well, yeah. And then we're not back yet because we, we made finals. So yeah, we go correct. back two so weeks you later. Go back even further. Um, so, but yeah, like you'd be, 
I'd be well and truly into preseason by now. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's funny how much it's changed in 12 years now. There's a, uh one thing I reckon back in your day, because I know there's a there's there's a couple of funny stories actually around your Utah camp, which I I kind of picked up um, over the last couple of weeks when I was thinking about this episode. But I wonder if this stuff goes on like now. But there's two things that happened in Utah that have been pretty well documented with you. One was your first interview where you got scone yeah, in the head yeah. with the footy, yeah. and then the other one, which I'd love you to touch on to see if anything happens like that now, was with the duck. Yeah, yeah. and like that sort of like instant intimidation, like belittling kind of, hey, mate, yeah, welcome to the like welcome to the big boy league that goes on. Are you talking about? I think you got given a duck and yeah, you weren't allowed yeah, to like okay, lose okay. it or something I'm like that. that you, yeah, yeah you got that I, right. I, like, so, they, so the interview was my first interview that we ever done. It was like day two <laughs> and Ben Spate, not many people would probably remember Ben Spate, but he was just kicking balls at my feet and I could feel them whiz past my feet constantly. And he's obviously leant back on one and just <laughs> launched it. And it's just, and it's just ever. flushed me. Bang, and I was like, you know, rattled by it. And then I hit the deck and up my back in my um, T-shirt that I was wearing, I had the duck because the duck was if you lose the duck, you just – it was just – yeah, it was like a – A little game. little game and you had to pass it on every day and you lost the duck. There was um, punishments to be had. But Is that Was that just for initial players coming in, new no, players? No, it was everyone. You can pass, oh, you can, I thought but, that was like a oh, – no, Jesus. No, 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 no. So the duck was – yeah, if you lost the duck, you'd be – right. you know, have to go and roll out in the snow and everyone throw snowballs at you or something like <laughs> that. I remember, I remember one day oh, I lost bowling. We went out and I had to take my shirt off and get snowballs thrown at me. And Kane Turner threw, threw one more snowball than I thought he should have. Yeah. So I went up to him and I was just so angry. And I went to jump and punched him and slipped and knocked his tooth out. <laughs> oh, he, he, has a, he, has a, he has a fake tooth and I knocked it out. And I think still to this day he hasn't had it fixed, so he's still got the fake tooth. Oh, I, we always remember you. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But you felt so bad after. But it was just one of those things that had just been a long camp. Yeah. <laughs> and getting <laughs> snowballs thrown. And Kane was just, you know, unfortunate that I took it out on him. Jeez, mate. So, because, yeah, North Melbourne's been pre- like a pretty big part of your life. So, yep. it's probably going to be, a, I mean, as much as I want to go through as much Saints content, I'd love to talk a little bit about that because um, I guess probably be interesting to hear how you would describe your whole journey at North in like a kind of not a pointed answer because. You, you probably went in as an 18 year old kid and you come to the Saints as like a an experienced footy player and a man in a, in a way. Yeah. So there's quite, quite a lot happened there. It would have been good, bad, and ugly, I, I imagine. Yeah. Throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think when I got to Saints, it was, I'd, pl- I'd had more uh, MRIs, CTs, and X rays than I'd played games. And oh my God. I, I think I was a few games, a few C, a few X rays short. Uh, sorry, MRIs short of a hundred. So I think in my first couple of weeks of being at the Saints, I had to do a few extras. So I think I notched up a hundred MRIs, Whoa. CTs, and, um, across Olympic, like Olymp- everywhere. Uh, Olympic Park. That was just at Olympic Park. So I'd done a few, like a few in other places, just because you had to. But yeah, and I'd played sixty five games of football and had. You know, that, that works out to be like 10 scans a year, if not more, well, in eight years, so like 12 or 13 scans a year. So. Is that like, just to caveat that, is that like, if there's any little doubt, even if it's not that bad, is it at that level, it's like scan uh, as well? Yeah, not yeah. Only so just- I did like, I'd done 10 hamstrings, six calves, like three knee surgeries. Wow. Like I've done a lot of stuff and especially with soft tissues, they like to relook at things. Double down. So just make sure that coming back that it looks as good. And when you do hamstrings and done multiple hamstrings, there's a lot of, so, like, having said that, I could have done three or four scans on the one hamstring that I'd done. So, but then there's, yeah, there's heaps of different stuff that you just have to go. you got to sort back, like, you know, let's go scan that or whatever. So, it's just so they have a really good idea because it is a guessing game to a certain mm. degree. Symptoms don't always show exactly how you're feeling. So, getting that pitch is pretty important from a rehab point of view. But, yeah, like, I guess that sort of encapsulates my eight years at North Melbourne. Like, I think... Yeah, it didn't obviously end on great terms, but also I needed a fresh start because I was burnt out oh, by I can imagine. And the last year I was there, the hub year, like people ask, well, what was it like? And yeah. you know, there was some guys here obviously doing it super hard. Like we were in Queensland. Like there's always – Yeah, but it's <laughs> still been, weird though, isn't it? Like, could just, have been so much worse, but – It's still not like, normal. We, we'd won one game in the hub <laughs> for the year. I didn't play in it. Oh, we'd no. won one game in the hub. And I was like, it's imagine you go into work and you've got a performance review every week and it's a negative that you've lost. <laughs> you've got to live with each other. And you've got to live with each other and run into those people that, you know, live, people's livelihoods are based on you know, yeah. their ability to hold a job. And 
it can just like nobody was super happy to be there because we, it was just I think Saints when I came to Saints they were talking about how good their year was they made finals and all mm. that and they were super tight as a you know collective including girlfriends wives and families and all that kind of that and I was just like if you guys can walk out of that situation thinking like that <laughs> you guys are going real well because I had the worst year of my life hands down yeah uh, you know what we've never spoken about the hub with a team that hadn't hadn't done that well yeah which is it I was, never thought of it that way it was ugly. It was yeah, really, really dude, because, man, for people like should know that AFL environments, when you're losing that next week, is like everything's really serious. Everyone's getting accounted for. Yeah. Like you, everyone's accountable yeah. through that week. The, Imagine the, living with each other. Yeah. The good, the good programs don't undulate too, like, too much. Everyone mm. tries to stay pretty level. But when you've lost that consistently bang, bang. and you're trying to find answers, yeah. like, and guys don't have answers because, like, we just didn't have the cattle and we didn't have – the game plan and we didn't have, like yeah. there's so much stuff and you go like I don't know what we're fronting up this week but <laughs> like there was a period of time like where I missed six AFL games of football and didn't play a single game of football myself oh because of no because there's, no, there's no games to play so it's like and then I came in and played the rest of the year and I was like so underdone <laughs> yeah. I didn't play a single game of AFL football for so long and and I was just never going to be able to play decent footy to say that I deserve to be here and mm. you know I was one of 13 that left that year and um yeah I, I guess it did put a bit of a sour note on leaving North Melbourne but also like I was very ready like VFL football would have been better than that year that I had and I, I think there was a few other guys in that situation that de definitely was burnt out by this by that environment like guys that definitely could have played at other clubs were just like no nah, yeah. I'm done I've had enough and I, I was yeah, I just felt like I still had footy left in me, so I was just going to do everything to get back in. Because what position did you come into North at? Yeah, forward, forward third tall. Was that was that where you did you play that consistently your whole North career? Uh, came into the team early doors, I reckon, and played on the wing. Yeah, I've always ran reasonably well, um, but then locked down a third tall sort of forward position in my like my third or fourth, my fourth year, I reckon. And then yeah, that was just always always me, and I said it. <laughs> another thing like North Melbourne I was I was trying to get the crumbs of Drew Petrie <laughs> Ben Brown and Jared White like I was the fourth forward at 193 like there wasn't there wasn't, there wasn't a lot on offer yeah like, they were probably clunking most of them yeah, as well yeah. and like I think Ben Brown was like the most targeted forward since they've been taking you know um, stats in the <laughs> AFL VFL history and you go like so I'm getting <laughs> say that's 70, I think it was like 70% he was targeted yeah. and then Drew Petrie's getting the next most and then yeah. Jared Waite's getting the rest and I'm getting whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever's You're after that looking. yeah so like and we played a lot like a more contested style of football and all this like I, I people ask what's the difference and like one of the big things is not, St Kilda play a high running brand of football which yeah, suits which me down awesome. to a T so yeah, it's you got to get really lucky with that because some guys like you know you look at teams that have built it really well in the past like Hawthorne Geelong like they Hawthorne had all the left footers and all the good ball users and all that kind yeah. of thing and like and then Richmond had all the, the runners and the high half forwards that worked really hard so it's yeah. like I feel like in what I said we're drafting the kids that suit, suit the, the way that you play Yeah, um, which you know, luckily enough, that's that feels like it's me too. Absolutely. Yeah, I reckon you had it like, I mean, I don't know North fans' opinions of you, and I don't really want to get in it, but like, you mate, you, you smile, but like, you actually played some unbelievable footy for them at periods. Like, like you kick some big, like, there's some games you kick four or five goals in some clutch moments as a key sort of forward. Which, yeah, which would have been more frustrating than anything yeah, else. That I, okay. I'd do it and then not get another kick like, for the rest getting, of the year. But like, were you getting injured or was that like, were you just like, was there inconsistencies? Like, what was the challenge for you in, in that regard? I mean, Cause, yeah, because people say, what's the difference? Well, and like, you, you, you found now, something and it's just like, well, you know, not being injured. Like, I'd, I'd never done a full year, full preseason into a full year my whole time in right. Melbourne. So it was just like, you get some continuity that, helps that massively up though, doesn't it um yeah like the reason why people continually get better is just small Play. improvements consistently and yeah. i just was going like this and <laughs> trying to find answers and kept doing hamstrings and carbs yeah. and you go like i just can't catch a break and yeah. mentally that's hard because i'm somebody that wants to get better yeah. but you, you're fighting your own body to a certain degree so um yeah unbelievably frustrating for North Melbourne supporters, I can only imagine. Um, but like the, equally you though, because like that's the yeah. worst part as well because you you understand the frustration because you're all living through the same thing. Yeah. Because you're probably aware like I can go out and I can do this, but at the same time, because you, it's, 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 that's what sports hard with, man. It's when you, the body and your trust and when it's not trusting you and 
you can't explain things to people. Yeah. It's not you're not trying to get injured. Yeah, it's, no, it's, and it like sucks. I've had chats with a lot of the younger guys recently. Well, a few of the young guys that had maybe had really good form and then dropped away, and like they start doing heaps of extra touch and all this kind of thing, which I did. I was very reactive. I was going like, okay, like I kicked four goals this week. What did I do this week that was so oh. good that I? <laughs> and that in and of itself is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad that's habit. OCD. Yeah, well, it's but it's like if you've got your your um, program down to the absolute T, you just mm. stick to that. And yeah. like guys doing more touch, I'm like, well, you're doing more touch when you're playing well? And they're like, oh, nah. And I'm like, well, why have all of a sudden do you think that that's now the easy fix that doing more touch is going to get you to where you need to be? Like right. doing more touch, sometimes maybe it's more stressful. So now you put more time into it and now executing the actual mm. you know, thing that you need to do is now harder because you've put more stress on that individual thing. So it's it's getting a really good balance and sticking to your process that definitely has been a difference for me in recent years. Yeah, how many um how many coaches did you have uh, across your time at North? Did yeah, well, so I had I had Brad Scott and then Reshaw and that Re was Re oh, Reshaw for, for eighteen months. Okay, um, well, oh, so that was a, okay. That's pretty good. I yeah. mean, that's that's not. So you've had what three coaches? Oh no, uh, we had rats. My yeah, first so you've year. had four coaches yeah. your whole career. Yeah, it's like, not too bad. No, I mean, like Scotty was so. Like he was there for my first six and a half, seven years. Um, yeah. And, you know, the way that he operates is very similar to Ross. Oh, yeah. Um, and then having Shory come in and Shory's definitely um, relationships guys and then Rats is definitely more relationships as well. And then having Ross is more similar to like Scotty. So, um, yeah, yeah I've, had, I've had a little bit of both, but like I think Ross is just just a big one on – and so was on Brad with just standards. And yeah. that's that works really well for me. And I, I think it gets the best out of me. It kind of keeps everyone consistent when you walk in the doors, doesn't it? Like you kind of know what's expected, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Ross walked in and everyone was just like the same, didn't matter who you were, which is yeah. great. Like it's just Love very that. level, very leveling. It's um, good for good for the young players coming in too, because they instantly feel like a part of it. Yeah. You work hard, you'll you get rewarded. You'll get rewarded. Yeah. I'm I was one one thing I really wanted to speak to you about was um I don't know, do you watch other sports? Are you bits, are you, bits and pieces. Like, are you, yeah, big in no, a, are you uh, just all foot? Are you a footy nut? Oh, I'll, I'll, like, watch the Cricket World Cup for like, that Oh, was, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, what do you think of that? I mean, amazing. Like, I, I honestly thought that we were done. I thought the Indians were knocking them around, and I'm like, oh, the, the deck looks a bit too too paced, and I don't know how we're going to go. And then, um, uh, Travis yeah, Head, Travis Head, mate. Then that catch, like, if he had to drop that catch, like, He's a superstar, Mate, isn't he? Free. Yeah. But he, it's it's amazing, like the individual, like obviously Maxi had his moment. He's like great Saints guy and he had his moment against Afghanistan and smoked him around. Mm. And, um, but everyone sort of had like little bits and pieces and yeah, I mean, at the, in the biggest stage and Travis had to knock a hundred. I think he was like the third Australian to get a World yeah. Cup hundred. Which yeah, is which is in World Cup final. Yeah, but yeah. that, you know, what's uh, interesting because we just spoke of the hub. It's, I think, I can't remember which footy club, it, it might have been North. Didn't Ricky Ponning, did Ricky yeah, Ponning come in? Yeah. Yeah, because like so he's, obviously, he's crazy North. Like that's, yeah, that's yeah, one yeah. of the weird things about footy. Yeah, like you've got these guys the that other are day, like. like uh, it might have been Ricky Ponning came in like just trying to tell people like, this is nothing. Like yeah, suck it up. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, from a World Cup point of view, like if you're like England lost, I think they've won one game there. Like imagine being in, in India. Yeah, like yeah. there as a camp and not doing well. Like the same with the Oz cricket team. They, oh, I think they lost their yeah, first and then two games. Back to a like, I can only imagine <laughs> being like Australians, obviously English, even more. But being Indian, like yeah. there's 1.3 billion Indians, and like I think there's as many millionaires over there as there are <laughs> people in Australia. Yeah, like wild. it's the, just crazy. Like, rich, like like I was trying conundrum. to explain to my girlfriend while we we're watching it. Like Virat Kohli's like I think he's been he's, second most marketable. Yeah, he's in the, in he's, the, in the I think world. He's top five or top ten most followed on Instagram. Yeah, like and which he's is cricket just, player. And he's cricket player. <laughs> like, yeah, most, yeah. like most of the world wouldn't have a clue. That who rattles Vera. people in America because yeah. they don't know cricket. Yeah. They're like, why is he so yeah, big? Like, exactly. what's cricket? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's like the power. Like, and it would be amazing. Like, imagine if AFL had the ability to pick their best players to go play in a league where you're going to make fifty times the <laughs> yeah, money. Oh, mate. <laughs> yeah, like, short form, yeah. and you go. Well, I yeah, can go play go, go for, for eight weeks and make more yeah, than exactly. Yeah, playing a test series. Yeah. Like, oh, I was only thinking during COVID. Like, we obviously got cuts in our wage, and um, I think it was um, the Australian captain was 
Um, I think you had the biggest contract. It was like 3.6. Oh, um, Cummins? Cummins had yeah, like yeah, 3.6 yeah, yeah. yeah, I think he got the, he <laughs> got the highest. And I don't know that he got paid that year. And he's just like, God, I'm talking about like, obviously, <laughs> it's just different realm. Like 3.6 million you're missing out on. Like yeah. that, that's a big hit to the yeah, pocket. And I'm hit, complaining yeah. about mine. <laughs> yeah. But it's all relative, I guess. Yeah, it's all relative. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Because I wanted, like what I wanted to speak to you about was mentality. Because I actually watched this um. Shout out to some of my boys. Tommy Bug, he told me to watch it. Johnny, uh, do you watch NFL? Yeah. I'll yeah. Do you know that? Did you watch it? Have you ever watched the Johnny Manziel? Manziel. Yeah, Doc, recently, I, watched yeah. that, I watched that last night yeah, for the first time. Yeah, he's Did crazy. that is fucking mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. He's crazy. Have man. you watched that, Braden? Oh, bro. He was, so for those that don't know, he was a, uh, he was pretty like sought after from high school because he did some pretty good things, but he didn't. He was a Texas boy, but he got Heisman Trophy. Winner. Yeah, he's a Heis, He's the first. I think he was the first player ever to be a freshman and win a Heisman. Yeah. yeah. So he like changed that whole university or college. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of the money they made yeah, and yeah. the name and yeah. licensing well, it's crazy stuff. The money that they don't make. And yeah, the well, that was the thing. I think that made over a billion that. dollars off him. They built yeah. a hundred thousand seat yeah. stadium, yeah. and he didn't pocket anything. Yeah. Um, but obviously the, the way he went into the league was like really high. Um, I think it was high in the draft I think round, f- yeah, uh, round one, like number five. 20, was he? No, no, was I think he was higher. Later. No, no, late. Like I think he went in the twenties. I'm not oh, sure. I'm pretty sure oh, okay. because. Yeah, brain's on his head. That'll I'm be pretty right sure then. because of his <laughs> He <off-field>. party, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was a party. Off, yeah. yeah. But on talent, and I don't think he had as good a year his second year or the year that he no, got he drafted didn't. as he his didn't. freshman year. So that, that obviously made a difference, but. Yeah, like a guy that's obviously got all the Fuck talent me. in the world that just couldn't put it all, just, you know, ha- had he to feel like it. he needed to he party it. to get away with it. Like, have you read Andre Agassi's book? Like yeah, his, well, his dad, wasn't it? His yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad was but, like, a, just didn't love tennis, but, yeah. like, sort of didn't have any other choice. Like, it's just bizarre. Like, I think I love most aspects of football, which is – other than like the pressure and expectation and all that kind of stuff, which yeah. I don't know how many people really love. It just that. comes like it's something you have to learn, doesn't it? Like you're yeah. forced to yeah. forced, forced to be forced good to at deal it. With it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not a choice. But like a lot of people, like I love the training side of things. Like I'm doing a masters of high performance, like all that kind of stuff. You know, I I love that. But a lot of guys don't. A lot of yeah. guys will do the bare minimum, and then when it comes to football, just be able to flick the switch. Yeah, which I probably don't have as well as those guys. Oh man. But, yeah. I really miss I really miss now. Fuck, I hope you're still enjoying it, which you probably appreciate it more now. You're a little bit older and you've been in the system a while, but it's change rooms, like with the boys. Oh, yeah. Mate, you cannot recreate that in any nah, other walk of life. No. Nah. Like there's no, like it doesn't matter what you do. That's the best thing All the guys that leave, they talk about like <laughs> oh, just the banter sucks, with, the, with the boys. Like it's yeah. just not, it's not the same. And I go like, yeah, there's no environment. It makes it really hard. Like, I talk about one of the biggest issues that we have in football is like our transition out of football into regular life. And that plays a massive part. Like imagine you've just left school where you've got like five to 10 really tight mates that are, you know, interested in footy, but other things like you've come into 40 guys all love sport and just all we do is play games all day, every day. (laughs) That's a hard life to leave and then get the same, you know, joy from in, in other things. Yeah. Um, it's really, really hard to deal with. Dude, I reckon it's really hard to recreate playing on yeah. the MCG or playing at Marvel in front of a packed house. No, I haven't played too that- much at the G, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mar- Marvel You play with the two clubs that love Marvel. <laughs> yeah, yeah 30, Mate, I can talk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 20,000, Sunday, 440. Hey, you play well me. on the G, though. I you, love the you've G. always Mate, played I well. Love, I love the yeah, G. It's form, massive. It's running. We had a, we had quite, I think our, some of our initial games at the start of this season. We played played in the G. Yeah, and we, you were flying. Mate, it's it's just a, it's so much like people don't. It's so much bigger and there's so much more space and like as a winger or, in, or an oh. outside running player, like it just means that you, oh I can just run harder and I'm going to get the ball. Like yeah. that's great. Whereas the Marvel or maybe some like we played some games at Blundstone in when I was at North and you're like you run out of space and you're thinking, <laughs> you do a 10 meter lead and you're over the boundary it's like, like Buddy could kick like 15 yeah. there because well, it's it just was such like, a small ground I remember I said one day to uh, Cooper Sharman Saints were playing um, it was last game of the year Saints were playing Frio and they're in Tassie I can't remember why but it obviously would have been hmm. money or something like that but I said to him, mate, whatever you do, just be the deepest because people don't realize it's one kick into the middle of the ground from full back and then one kick inside 50 deep. Oh. Ends up kicking like four goals yeah, out the back. Yeah, kicked a bat. Yeah, kicked a bat. There you go. That's- and he comes home and he goes, mate, that was the best advice ever. <laughs> and I'm like, mate, 100%. Like, I just remember Boomer just just high-tailing it back to goal and just be out the back and him kicking him from the goal square player. just because it just, like, it just goes up the middle and bang. Yeah. So, like, the G, you can go 
out wide and it can be six kicks before you get inside yeah, 50. Literally, it's mate, that it's wide. huge. Yeah. It's huge. Oh, it's massive ground. Mm. I was hoping we got more more games there because I'm like, I just want Saints to play on the G because I'm like, that's where the grand finals play. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. but like to be fair, we every time we go there, we do we do do all right well, for the for the amount like that we get to play. Yeah, on we're it. trying to play a running game. It's, it's definitely suits suit, the game, yeah, which is good. I mean, that, Marvel under the roof, so it's like it's fifty fifty because we played games and it was pouring rain when we played Richmond last year at one stage. Yeah, yeah like well, under the roof's not so bad. It's good. It's still, mate. I love going to Marvel to watch the game. It's a great stadium. Yeah, it's just I don't know the AFL just don't you play finals on the MCG, don't you? So exactly right. Hey guys, just a quick pause in this episode to let you know that I've partnered with Vibe Culture. Now, I don't know about you, but I love having a good time on the weekend, socializing with my mates over a few beers, but I also love seizing the day and being productive. And that's where Vibe Culture comes in. Their new wake up blend, I've got the tropical punch here, is the perfect way to seize your day just with a scoop of it into your water bottle in the morning and it'll keep you going. It's also a really good replacement for coffee for those big coffee drinkers out there that need to keep going back for the second and third and fourth to get those energy hits. This will get your day going after those late nights, movie marathons, or even those hangovers to keep you on track for the day. Now, what I love about them, as I said, it's a very healthy replacement. They've got it down to two grams of sugar and 54 calories per serving. And it's not about what's low inside. It's about what's packed in it. And their infused herbs with their botanical blend, Vibe Culture has got going, makes it the perfect recipe and the perfect boost for me in the day. Also, what I love about this company is they want to look after you, the Unlaced listeners. So if you head to the Vibe Culture website, which is in the bio below, and you plug in the discount code UNLACED, you'll get 15% off your first purchase and the morning will thank you. So get around them. It's a great brand doing great things and I love having it to kickstart my day. Let's get back into the episode. One thing with you I think is really, I don't think you've ever sort of exposed or spoken about enough, but is I'd like the mentality that you would have had to display throughout your time at North, even coming into St Kilda as a senior player, but... Like you, I didn't actually re- didn't realize the scan situation. That's that's mind boggling to me. But I think you played a lot of footy in the VFL and had to earn your right to get back into the site, probably more than you would have wished for. Which I think is one of the hardest things to do in sport and keep your head and not lose it because that was one thing I put my hand up. I hated doing and I couldn't do well. Like yeah. I, my ego was too big to drop back in and say no. I've got to knuckle down and do that. And I just wanted to speak to you about that. What that was like for you know, a big part of your career because you probably were, on ability-wise, you should have been in the best 22 every week. Yeah, I mean, there was certainly some stuff that I wasn't getting right early on in my career that you get better at, you know, defense. <laughs> defense, I didn't play any defense <laughs> as 18. There are a lot of kids are like that, but <laughs> especially the way Brad Scott wanted to play, which we, everybody does really well, empty out of 50 and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, like I reckon I'd be close to 50 games at AFL football now, like in the high forties, I reckon. Um, and that's, you know, half, well, half my AFL game. So, mm. um, and certainly early on I played and wasn't ready to play, but then when you're coming in and out, when you feel like you're one of the players, it's, mm. it can be really hard. And I guess like something that if, you know, hopefully I don't have to do too much of that <laughs> left in my career, but it's it's just keeping it's like the big thing for me is trying to keep everything as consistent as possible and your attitude doesn't change and it's super hard in football clubs but it does go a long way if you're that player that 100%. that really keeps his head up and drives standards no matter what level of competition he's playing and um is always a good time not take yourself too seriously um, it's a hard thing to get a balance between wanting to put everything into football, but mm. then also being okay when it doesn't go as well. well as what, you see, know. How have you got that? How have you been able, is that like your upbringing? Like, cause you obviously have a really good perspective on things. Cause I reckon a lot of players, when you come out of it or even a bit later in your career, you can have that view. But when you were going through it to be able to think that way and not let sort of like, you know, oh, this perfect career that you wanted in the AFL, like. You know, because you've played 100 games in, and you've been in the system for 10 years, which I think is actually a real testament to you because that's really hard to – mate, 100 games, is, a lot of people don't get there for one. But the fact that you're still playing and you you played your, the most games you played in an AFL season have been across the last two for the Saints, yeah. which says says a lot about your mentality. Yeah. I mean, it's – yeah, I just – I couldn't get stuff going well early. So to get consistency was obviously, like I spoke before, was really, really hard. But – um. Yeah, it's it's definitely that, that attitude of, you know, I came into St. Kilda just wanting to be, you know, a guy that other guys could lean on as far mm-hmm. as like 
I've so I've said to people that there isn't there isn't a feeling that you've had within the four walls of a football club that I haven't felt, and I think that's a really interesting perspective because. <laughs> yeah. Guys that have that probably get out of the system a lot quicker than what I have. Yeah. The guys that played 15 years of football, like Brad Hill, or you've had on, yeah. like he's played 200 games and won three premierships. <laughs> yeah, and how easy is football? He's like the, one of the most gifted runners you'll ever see. Sprint, repeat, unbelievable yeah. speed, all this kind of stuff. Like I run okay, not particularly quick, pretty <laughs> lean. Like I haven't, um, you know, I haven't had it all my way my whole career. And it's just like, well, you know, I have the ability when I came into Saints, I was just like, you know, I spent a little bit of time with them before I got into the ones team with the VFL guys. And it's just like, I believe now after spending that time that everybody has the capability of playing AFL football. It's just, can you get all the things aligned in the right process to get there? Because right. I was delisted from the worst team in the AFL. Yeah. Which is- so if I can get to that, <laughs> if I can be playing consistent AFL football, I believe anyone can. Now, other people would say differently. Yeah. But that's, I just, being delisted gives you that, you know, openness and, you know, something to go, oh, you know, it's, I've been there, I've done that. Yeah. Um, that you can, if you get those things aligned and it might be your motivation and your diligence and your professionalism and, you know, working on your skills and all that. There's there's so many guys that could get to, you know, wherever they want to be and whatever level if they can get those things aligned, which eventually you sort of feel after eight, nine years, ten years of football, <laughs> I sort of have got in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's interesting. Just on that, I actually got a, got a quote here. Gonna quote you on something you said because yeah. it's quite, it's not funny, but it's quite funny as well. Because when now and now I know you can have a laugh about it. But I've been on the fringe. I've been delisted. I've played good footy. I've played bad footy. I've had coaches not wanting you in the team. I've had it all. Yeah. That's pretty like that's pretty much what you summed up. Yeah, I, well, which is a fucking roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> I said it's it's super relatable, like to guys that well, aren't, majority of AFL yeah. have got this have like had you gone said, through like hundred games of football. I think's like might be. 19% of the AFL play like that many games and then half that again to 150. So it's like a lot of guys go through that sort of stuff. More and, more than the media chair. Yeah, 100%. The majority of the AFL go through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? Because what is it? I think the average career was a few I, years I, back. It was like four years yeah, or something. I think it's gone up a little bit oh, okay. since. Well, that's well, I think probably because of the draft sort of stuff that they're well, getting them and right yeah. a lot better nowadays. Well, but be- better developed coming in maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and kids coming in like – Six I said this stars. multiple times. I feel like every all the kids that come in the last two years just sat during COVID and just watched Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant docos yeah. and come in. <laughs> and you're just like, these kids are yeah. just in the gym. Like doing, the Dacos boys doing, were doing push-ups at 4 a.m. Yeah. Like when they were 13 yeah, or something. Exactly. Like, like you just go right? like, I, I honestly think COVID's like the feeling that I got of kids coming in, like it was just like building and then it just mm-hmm. shot through the roof of levels of professionalism. Like we got – uh, Marcus Winghager, Machito Owens, Matthias Philippou. Yeah, like, they're, they're all, they're all Nash unbelievably. Like, one of our best kicks. Yeah. All like unbelievable. Yeah. All unbelievably, in, you know, professional and ready to go, yeah. which is, which is great. Cause yeah. you're looking at kids like Harley Reid that's going to go number one. Like he'll probably play some really freaking good football <laughs> yeah, next year. Straight away. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's like, yeah, there's guys that have done that in the past, but consistently, even kids that aren't like, top few picks coming yeah. in and playing consistently. Like Mateus was picked 10. I think he played every single game for the year. I really like him, man. Well, yeah. He's, oh, something about he seems like a bit of a shy kid too or like yeah. he's a bit reserved, but geez, he's, he's, he's got a lot about him that you'd like in a footy player, don't, yeah. don't you? Yeah, and like every, like people within the forwards football club, like he's he's, pro- he's probably more solid than I am coming in. <laughs> <Really>? like, <laughs> like maybe not up top, but his legs are solid and yeah. he runs unbelievably well and his power's off the charts and he kicks it a mile and, you know, he's got a, he's a agile. Like you just go like, this is – Cra- like he comes in and goes, oh, like I want, I got like that five, and you go like, he generally does have that five sort of physical, yeah, mate, physical he, makeup. He does. Sure. He takes key pack marks. Sometimes yeah. goes back and yeah. kicks a goal, and you're like, he's yeah. as an eighteen year old mid. It, yeah, and you go like, yeah. I think he was the youngest player in the draft last year. So he's only, oh, really? like, I think he's turned, I think he might turn nineteen now, uh, end of, end of December. Wow. So like that's crazy, crazy young. How cool is the maybe clip? Maybe he's 20. I don't know. Yeah. yeah how cool is the clip? Yeah, that's when I knew he was a ripping kid was the clip when he walked in the RC Park for the first time. I think it was like Lenny, Goddard, 
and Rob Harvey were just all there shaking his hand. He's like, wow. Yeah. He's like, fuck. That was like a lot to take in. Yeah. Which I can imagine that's that's the type of shit that I always want to know what what it's like when you get drafted. Like that moment must have been like, oh, I'm here now. This is this just got real. Yeah. I mean, my my thing was, which is bizarre, but I got a phone call from James Brayshaw, like, because he was our uh, chairman oh, at the time. Yeah, and yeah. he was like, I was like, whoa, this is James. Like, listen to him commentate, <laughs> like, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I yeah. never had that moment with anyone. I think he ran me, like, the day after or something. And then, obviously, you speak to Drewy and yeah. Boomer and these guys. But yeah. I was like, oh, James Brayshaw. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. <laughs> like, and, you know, not yeah. not a big wig in the football world by any stretch. But, oh, like, mate. TV and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, and then for kids coming in at the minute to St. Kilda, like, if you've followed Saints at all through the early 2000s to mid-2000s, like, Goddard, Hayes. <laughs> mate. Harvey, and if you follow Geelong, like we got Corey Enright as well. Oh, it's just yeah, like, Boris. Why do they call him Boris? Is that like I a I, – I, I, you, you wouldn't know. be able to get it out of you. Like, nah, he, he's yeah. a quiet guy. But, <laughs> I like um, that. I just keeps, like, Yeah, keeps it to himself. Keeps him to himself but great player though, wasn't he? Superstar. Like yeah. I was a Geelong supporter. All Australian, like, like a pretty all team. All, that, but, underrated, I don't know that many. All Australian in the year he – left football, retired. Like, there's not many people Did that retire really? on their own terms. I'm like, that's a statistic. retiring all Australian is pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah, boss. Yeah, that's a boss move. Yeah, that is How old was he? Move. Was he like a yeah, alpha? Yeah. Yeah, genuine alpha. <laughs> yeah. Um, I reckon you could be a bloke that does no. that. You're more likely getting all Australian in your 30s than your 20s. For well, absolute yeah, I was sure. a busted ass of my 20s, so <laughs> nah, there's mate, you were, chance. You were in the all Australian squad for like every week this year for like the first half of the season, which was and pretty. Then, and then fell in. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, we lost a few games. Yeah. So that doesn't help. But. Yeah, that's that's a bigger bigger achievement. I wanted to go in the St Kilda journey because probably most people know, but I'd be interested to understand the story of how you got into St Kilda because from all reports is you played a preseason game against the Saints and you kicked a bag and that I assume that might have helped, but I don't know if that was. I don't, oh, yeah, no. So you got that around the wrong way. Oh, a little you bit. played for Saints against played for Saints, Saints against North Melbourne. Oh, while, but, while I was I was already on the list by that stage, but oh, I was okay. like first game back after being delisted was at oh, Arden, Arden Street. Like I'd played you know, eight years of there. I was like, guys, do you need a lift? I know where I'm going. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, kicked four against them, and that was. Oh, like, so you're already on the books then. So yeah. how how did the no, Saints so how, how did the how Saints happened? relationship? It's actually an interesting story, but oh, like I hope it's, so. it's 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 who you know, not what like what you know, like. <laughs> Exa- perfect example of that, but I'd I'd reserved myself that I wanted to get back in, so signed with Collingwood VFL and did the tour and all that, and done a couple of training sessions with a few of their boys during the off season, and then over Christmas, New Year's Eve, I get a message from Brad Scott, and I would have had from Brad maybe ten text messages in my total career from Brad, like in the eight years that I was there. So getting a text message from Brad, I was like, "This is where's Brad Scott at this point?" Is so he- he's in that he's in the AFL, but he's quite. Tight with uh, Simon Lethalene, who was our ah uh, okay because he was working for the in the AFL wasn't yeah, he, at the time so. right yeah. this is before, and, and isn't it? Scotty for a long time you think coaches aren't your biggest fans but in yeah. hindsight I think he liked me a lot more than I potentially <laughs> yeah, thought yeah um but yeah got a text from him saying what are you doing like next year are you trying to get and, he, and I was like mate yep just trying to get it back in Simon so calling with all this kind of stuff he goes all right leave it with me. I got something for you. And I was like, what? What do you mean you got Whoa. something? What do you mean you got something for me? <laughs> and then- This is New Year's Eve, right? This is well. New Year's Eve. <laughs> so you're like, uh, and I'm like- Starting 20, yeah. was this 2020 going into this 2021? 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, this is, that's a bizarre text message. <laughs> I don't know where it's going. But obviously I had not no idea about the relationship that he Were you had. tempted to like go back in and be like, well, what, what are you doing? It's yeah, like, I was just like, okay, mate. Yep, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> okay. Like I was thinking- Oh, I had no idea. And then get a message from um, him saying, yep, it's it's all going well. Um, you'll hear about it later on in the week or something like that. And then my ma- manager calls me two days later and says, Saints want you to come down and train. And I was like, oh, oh. sweet. So then by the time, like I'd got there and two weeks later I was on the list. Like, wow. Like, so have, but, yeah, like, did you train well? Like was it all like they needed you? I think needed, it was more, think it was just more, okay, is he invested? Yes or no? Because oh, okay. it's not like you played some good footy. We obviously think that you've got enough to still keep going and all that kind of thing. It was just like, are you still invested? Which, you know, a, a lot of guys that I played with that year would certainly along the lines of, I've had enough of this. Yeah, so, okay. Right. Um, fair enough that if you had to be in that way. But yeah, so I think it was it was pretty quick that um, they were like, yep, yeah, seems invested and away you go. Well, it's pretty, I think it's fair to say it's probably been one of the happiest parts of your career because – consistently footy you're really well respected by the club loved by the fans um 
you bet. You, you, you played as much footy, as I said, in the last two years as you have ever in a season. Yeah. Well, I've, had, I've had like chats with a few guys about like, God, you spend some time on that and which people wouldn't be privy to, but the time in the week when you're on the fringe and you're waiting to, it's like comes after main training and you're waiting to know whether you're in the team or not. It's the most stressful time of the year. You'd even be thinking about it the night before I'm waking up today, like, oh, am I in the team? Am I not in the team? Like probably first time in my career for the last, you know, year, I didn't really have to worry too much about wow, that. How I felt, good's that though? I felt like that was a big thing. And translate like, onto the field though, that sort of energy I mean, when you're more relaxed. Like, I'm a big believer in the amount of stress that you have throughout your body and how well you operate and all that kind yeah, of thing. So to relieve that from yourself and not have to worry <laughs> oh, about that is big. Yeah. Like, you know, and times that you've played really good footy in the past, that's certainly been a part of it, but consistently have it for a year, hadn't had that. So like I've talked to guys this year and I'm like, uh, about guys and their position in the team. And it's like, if you just get this much better, you don't have to worry about that. Right. And then your footy's going to go like this because you've taken away the biggest stress that you'll have, yeah. you know, possible. And it's just like being that fringe player, hardest position. Like if you were just no chance, yeah. you'd just be like, eh, whatever. Uh. If you're in the team and solid, yeah, like great. But that fringe player, and you might be playing every week, like, but if you bottom five, like you can be. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Are just, you in the Saints leadership group? No. Nah. What the f- how, how, how are you not? <laughs> no. This, unbelievable. this mate, he's given a lecture on how to get players better here. I mean, that's great though. If, if, you, if you're not in the leadership group and, and you've got this perspective on things, that's that's very healthy for the footy club. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like I said, it just all comes back to like, I've, I feel like I've been through Yeah, a when you've gone than, to the bo- the top and the bottom, yeah, yeah, yeah you've got a pretty good perspective on things. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a, it's a makeup that a lot of guys have had, so... Yeah. Um, I always find that with people in like life, people that have like, cut, like you know, gone to rock bottom and gone up or the other way around, if you get, get advice from them, they always have pretty good advice. Yeah. Like I had a few guys that came to me this year just to ask about like consistency sort of stuff because I was super inconsistent at North and seemed to have got it right. And you go like guys that you wouldn't expect come mm. to you and you're just like, well, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, like, <laughs> that I wouldn't is... expect that coming from oh, you. So there's that sort of internal uh, respect as well. well I'm not being but one or two guys that respect <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, rest yeah. don't. Fair <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. What's the um what's the biggest adjustment you've had to make or notice notice in in yourself since going from north to the Saints? Yeah, like that that stress thing. I promised myself when I walked into the football club at the Saints, I wasn't gonna stress about football. Yeah. And that's easier said than done. That's a really like, hard well, thing. Yeah, that's when you're a, prone to it. Yeah. But like you always come back to once I got back in, I think the perspective of going, I'm still lucky to be playing AFL football is a really good grounding spot for somebody. Like you know, no matter what, if I fall out of the team, you know, I'm still lucky to be paid to be playing football. Yeah. Um, you know, I could have not got back. Your Saints could not pick me up. I could have played VFL, could have got injured and then I would have been done. Mm. Like I've now played three years and you go like every moment's a bonus. And if every moment's a bonus, football becomes very easy. And like there's still, yeah, absolutely in fun. Um, Yeah. Like to this day that I'm, you know, still talking to the guys that are 18, 19 and still got good rapport with the guys that are my age. Like (laughs) that's, that's a cool thing to have at 30. Yeah. And you go like, God, guys. God, the guys at 30 when I came in North Melbourne seemed ancient Yeah, to like me. 45. Yeah, yeah, I say the same. 100%. Like I, Boomer, I was, Boomer felt like he was 105 like, when I <laughs> walked in the door. We and spoke, he just about was. We spoke about this before I came on. Because you were obviously doing your research on the show, but you took me back to the start of this podcast because he liked it. Mason liked our first, like one of our first reels we ever did on episode one. And it's funny you say that because a guy I did that episode with, which fuck, we've come a long oh. way. Jesus Christ. But... um. When I, when I was 18, he was 30 and he was the captain of the club. I went around to his house for dinner and I remember feeling like a kid. He had three kids. They were all under the age of eight or something. And I remember feeling m- more closer to the kids than I did yeah, him. Yeah. And now one thing from the outside, which you just touched on it, that I wanted to get like your opinion of or more insight on is you seem like you have like all your best mates at the club are like the young ones. And I'm interested to know, which I think is a great sign of culture because that wouldn't have been like that back in our day. Nah, definitely like, not. To like, get a coffee with the older boys, you've, you've maybe done something wrong or you've, they're taking you under your wing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's still like an element of that to a certain degree. I like to throw in my tidbits when I came <laughs> with the younger boys. But like Seb Ross is, for instance, same age as me and he's got three kids. Like, yeah. He's got, yeah. He's got, he's yeah. got no time to <laughs> yeah, be mates. Yeah, he's got no time <laughs> to be mates. Tim Memory's got two kids. Like, yeah. you know, there's, there's guys that have got 
most of the guys at my age have got <laughs> okay. other other stuff <laughs> going on. Like I don't do a whole lot. I don't go out and socialize a lot. So like getting yeah. the boys around during the week and mostly the young guys because they're the ones that need the most, mm. you know, love virtually within the four walls of the club um, is my sort of way of going, you know, this is – yeah, how, how I connect with you guys. So cooking them dinner, and obviously I live with a few of them. Live with Nasai Wanganin Malira and Mateus Philip, who's about to move in. <laughs> Why? Why did that, is that? Did you put your hand up like I'll yeah. take some of these boys yeah. in? Yeah, or are these boys gone, mate. You seem like a legend. I just want to live with you. Nah, like, so, that's, so you might even have another draft off, picked as well. Yeah, right? it started off with uh, Cooper Sharman came in mid year draft and needed somewhere yeah. to stay, and I was just like, yeah, we had a spare room, no worries. And then Nasai. They were going to move him into the group house that they have with all the first years and his family's from SA and they go, nah, we want to go in with the player. And I sort of like, well, yeah, more than happy to, more than happy to have him. And he has been unbelievable. Like, yeah, you guys get on, you guys love each other. So well. And it's like, <laughs> people always ask me and he asked me if people ask me this and they ask me it all the time. They're like, what's he like at home? Because yeah. he gives, because he gives nobody else anything. <laughs> and he's like, so people actually ask that and I'm like, is that everybody in the footy club or outside? In it? the footy club. Everybody in the footy club <laughs> at home. And I'm like, mate, do you not talk to anyone? Is he at the pretty football quiet. Club? Super quiet. <laughs> and at home, all he does is just he sends me memes and he just, you know, gives me shit and hangs. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, it's a great relationship that we have. And something like I go to other guys that potentially might take on a younger guy. I'm like, yeah, like Nazis. If you got Naz, you'd be sweet. But yeah. there's, there's plenty of kids that come in with things that uh, they struggle with and it's yeah, hard. So it's like, it's a bit of a, a run of the draw. But Mateus has been at the club for a year. So it's like, yeah. I know what he's like. He's super professional, wants to keep to himself. Yeah, sweet. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, mate, Wang, I want to speak about him because I reckon he's a superstar. Yeah. Like this year, I, how many, did he get Brownlow votes? He, did, he had a pretty- He had a few. I think he came- Fifth in our BNF. Fifth, yeah, fifth yeah. in the BNF. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. a slow start to the year. So like his second half. Mate, of the his year second was, half, he was like getting twenty-seven to thirty every week. Every as, week. Yeah, and his kicking ability, like when he has the footy, I, I notice like it's a good thing yeah, because yeah. his uh, his um, execution, like I reckon his percentage well, would he be came in right as, up there. Yeah, he came in as yeah, he's the best kick in the draft in his draft year, and but he's like a. 55 kilos like he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> dripping wet 55 kilos <laughs> yeah. and you go like this kid's gonna take some time and like to his credit he's gotten like he's still not massive but you know relative strength he's really really good and he's hit the gym and he's as strong as probably he needs to be at that position so um and yeah obviously off the back of last year he got more confidence like He's just a kid that you don't want to like touch wood, but like there's no reason why he shouldn't play 300 games of football. Oh mate, like, I reckon he's a, like, I reckon he's a future all Australian. He, he's, like he's, he's ahead of everyone athletically. Like yeah. he, he steps unbelievable. If you can, if you can touch him to tackle him, you'd want to hurt him because you're not going to get another chance at it for the rest of the game because he's so agile. <laughs> yeah, he's lightning. So uh, like he's got he's got all the skills that you want to be a superstar halfback, and you know if Sinks maybe goes in the midfield a bit more next year. For, like he's yeah. going to be the guy and yeah. he's going to be racking up 35 a week, no stress. He's Andrew McLeod type. He's like that. It reminds me of him. Yeah. Because like, he, if he gets forward and kicks the old goal, he's going to blow up. Yeah. Like he's he's yeah. already like, a superstar. Yeah, he's, he's kicking goals from outside 50 and you just go <laughs> yeah. like, I can't get a look at it in the second half this year and he's doing it easy. But um, yeah, absolute ripper kid. Yeah. What, I was going to, I was keen to know when you came to the Saints, even now, but like pretty much from like Max King down in age bracket. Like it's a pretty strong, um, strong group that we've got coming through. Like the first years, second years, third years, like all the way up to sort of Max King sort of age. It's like yeah. pretty impressive. Like the, as a Saints fan from the outside, there's now with Ross there and obviously takes some finals. Probably the first sort of year, year for maybe a little bit, even since you were there, where there's a bit of expectation now in the group of like, because I think Ross was very good last year at like, and it's new group. Temp, yeah, all that sort of stuff. But now yeah. we've seen, oh, you guys jumped above what everyone thought maybe Saints could do. Yeah. This first year, there's a bit of expectation now. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that can happen in football. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, and we're, what are we, November? So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> we're already talking about it. Even, <laughs> we're, even we're falling into it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm um, a Saints fan, so yeah. I just like talking yeah. about this Which stuff. Which, I mean, 100% fair enough. Um, but yeah, like on paper, uh, we, we're not a sh super old group. We mm. got a lot of young kids that played 20 games last year, so you expect them to be a bit better. And, um, you know, the kids that and are coming in, being more prepared to play, all that kind of thing. So, you know, and we got Liam Henry and Paddy Dow. And, yeah. you know, like uh, on paper, I understand Saints fans will look at it and go like, we've improved. Yeah. But it's November and God, and who so knows? Every team. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know? and it, like there's not too many teams that went backwards on paper. Yeah, Collingwood got time. better in yeah. a sense. Like, yeah. they're, well, they're exactly. probably feeling like they got better. And they won the flag. Yeah, that's how, and you that's go like competition. Now. And then, but like nobody picks it at this time of the year because yeah. so much stuff can happen. Somebody like a random team might come up with a game plan that just you know trumps everybody. Yeah. Like was it like I think doggies? They just had that like high handball game or whatever, and they just won it. Like nobody expected them to win in 2016. That kind of thing, like. Something could happen like that or you get a few injuries or, um, you know, whatever it is, like Dimmer and Gold Coast. Gold Coast yeah. have got all the talent in the world. They could come out and be amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a there's good- There's so many things in football and so many little stories that you go like anyone could. Yeah. Like anyone, any team and any body can step their game up. Well, and I think I feel that my perspective on that really shifted when with Craig McQuay and the Pies when he came. Like they went from 17th to 2nd. I'm like, shit, like doesn't really matter anymore. No. Like things can change that quick now. Get, you just got to get the formula right. Yeah. Like we um, – Which we kind of did that this year. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, all of a sudden I, we're playing finals. Like the, from, I feel like that's the brilliance of AFL as a sport. Like other te- like other leagues, say like soccer, for instance, on your yeah. end. Like yeah. some clubs are so f- loaded compared to everybody else. Like yeah. our competitions, although we're not on the millions and millions that soccer are, anybody has the right to win the grand final. Like whereas – EPL. No, you can predict. You, know, you can predict the top whatever, three and four like, every year. Yeah, yeah. like and it sucks. Know. Yeah, it does. It sucks as a it's, fan. Yeah. that's why. That's why I always talk about with soccer. The funny thing, some of the best things to watch, which Australian sport doesn't have as much, is the promotion relegation. Yeah, yeah. Because you can games. kind of predict the top, but the yeah. bottom is like, mate, that club. If they go down, they might not survive. Yeah, like for, Loo- in, and lose t- millions yeah, of dollars. Lose, yeah, yeah. And the, for the other ones going up, they make hundreds of millions. Yeah. Yeah, which is wild. Yeah, which, you know, I'm glad that we don't have that because that, <laughs> that'd be crazy. Like, you've got all this expectation on just not getting relegated, yeah. not winning. So, like, yeah, uh, I think AFL footy and, like, just the quality of the final series last year was just… Well, it was good to watch. Yeah, I like, loved it. I don't think the AFL has been in a better position in recent times. Yeah, yeah, bloody oath. That's a good point. Hey folks, just a quick pause in this episode, which I hope you're enjoying, just to let you know that I have partnered with Dabble. Dabble is a gambling agency, one of the great platforms out there where you dabble socially and gamble responsibly. Very similar to Instagram, where you can follow some of the head honchos in the various sports and copy their bets to get some good wins on the board. Now, one of the more interesting things we're doing this year with Dabble is Jake's Take, a weekly stream every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m., where we put a couple of bets on some greyhounds we get some guests on the show and we cut up shop around what's happening around town in all codes across sport so make sure you come on down check it out within the double app and let's get back into the episode i always wanted to know who the funniest bloke was at the saints because i know jack higgins probably up there but like um like i love knowing who the funny blokes are in the club who who got the energy who makes everyone laugh Um, who's a bit weird and quirky yeah i mean he go you just don't know what you're gonna gonna do with he go i want to do him on a podcast (laughs) because i don't reckon i I reckon i just laugh the whole time he do um, but he's he his brain works so that he's just (laughs) flicking from one subject to the next so quick and like this guy (laughs) he's unassumingly smart like Uh, is he because, because he's I don't know. Do you listen to like Kanye West talk? Yeah. And you, you see, like, he seems like he's like talking on another level, but <laughs> yeah. obviously a super clever guy. Yeah. Because but it's funny how he's going about he's, it. Because he's produced so much amazing music, but the way that he goes off on tangents, you're like, this guy's got no <laughs> yeah, idea. I see. He goes like a bit similar that <laughs> he seems to be operating on like a different level to everybody else. <laughs> and you're just like, I don't know if that's quite correct or whatever, <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah. He's dry, like he just bought a new Tesla, like he's doing all right. <laughs> all right, good idea. Yeah. He deserves it, mate. I, I love watching him play footy. Yeah. Um, there'll be a lot of Saints fans watching, so we, we're going to talk about Ross the Boss. And um, I guess probably to go into, I mean, you talked about standards, but maybe on a bit more of an intimate level, like when he came in, and you've obviously worked with Brad Scott and so forth, but one thing I always notice with coaches or changes of coaches is it really shocks me is like how every coach is quite so different. Like it, so it's like you spoke of you one one week you're in favor new coach comes in you might not be but with Ross like for you across a good time in your career to kind of see and understand a coach probably quicker than you have before because you've you've had a few but what was like the most notable noticeable things about him that you were probably like really impressed with yeah like I, I don't know whether I said that on air or not but just his ability to everybody treat everybody the same mm. like from top to bottom. Everybody is judged based on pretty much how hard they work. 
Yeah. Like it's it's a pretty simple formula when you really think about it. And it's just like, yeah, nobody's, you know, from the absolute top in Steely and the leadership group down to whoever's at the bottom. Everybody gets treated. And it's not like no whipping boys or whatever, like guys have talked about in the past <laughs> and, and that kind of we talked about before. Yeah, with one of your um <laughs> yeah, with one yeah. of your mates. But yeah, he loves Tommy Sheridan. <laughs> um, but yeah, like there's just there's just none of that. And um yeah, obviously you hear in the past that he's been that way, but I think, you know, whether it's his time out of football or whatever, he's come in and he's a lot more measured and understands. Because at the end of the day, Ross just wants to win. Yeah. And it's like, okay, if that's not going to help, then mm. I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to be the way that I need to because he's a super clever guy. And yeah. And obviously, yeah, just got that winning mindset. One thing I've noticed um, with, with Ross is probably from the first time at the Saints, like we had a bit more of like a defensive style that I would say, and like he was really well known as a coach in the AFL for how like his defensive setups and things like that, maybe not defensive style, but his defensive setups might still be the case today. But when I watch St Kilda, like it's very quick, free flowing footy, which is one of our, like even our defensive pressure, like more so forward and things like that. I'm just like, that's why the fans even win, lose or draw now, where kind of everyone's up and yeah. about. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if people sort of associated that type of style of footy with with Ross. Maybe he was doing it Freo, but I didn't I didn't watch him as much yeah. um then. But I'd be interested to know, is that something you you've kind of noticed with him as well? Yeah, I mean, it's consistent when you've just got that attitude of just working hard, consistency of effort sort of goes like hand in hand with that. And it's like, yeah, like we've got a defensive system like everybody else. Mm. And but our, our attacking system is just off the back of our defensive system. So it's mm. just like the better you defend, the better we're going to attack. So mm. it's – and one thing that he has really good is, is there as much incentive to defend for every individual as it is to attack? And at the minute, our game plan is that way, that if you defend hard, you're going to be involved on the way back. So it's yeah. like your ability to have, you know, that motivation to go, you know, I'm going to pull my head down to get back because I know I'm going to get this outlet kick. Like yeah. ball comes in. Ball goes high. You just see Wilkes nudging in, <laughs> nudging his bloke under the footy. You go, I'm getting that outlet kick. Yeah, I'm putting yeah, my head yeah, down, yeah. and I'm going to be there every single time. Like that level of, um, you know, I know my teammates like that, and that kind of thing because I'm, we know what we're going to get. Mm. Yeah, just being really good at getting the best out of everyone like that. Oh, we love that. But the season, he's he's absolutely loved by the Saints fans, isn't he? Yeah. It was like when yeah. he, when his name was even hurled up, everyone had St Kilda was like, if, the, if they'd have got someone else, all hell would have broken loose in Moravian because yeah. everyone loves him. Um, what he's done with the Saints. I'm interested to know as well, when you came to St Kilda, because uh, you would have known the list pretty well because you've played against boys and I think everyone in the AFL kind of knows each other to an extent, but was there anyone that kind of caught you by surprise of like, like how good they were? Um, Initially, like the first years have come in and just caught me by absolute surprise about how, really? dil how diligent they are. But Because you know when you go into a club and you spend time with someone day in, day out, like, geez, that, that guy's a freak. Yeah. Which you um, might not pick up every week, you know, when you play him or, so, or whatever. I think Sings hadn't had, when I got there, hadn't had the year that he then had that year. Right. But you could just tell during the preseason, like, he's, he's balanced with the footy his ability to stop and go on a dime. He doesn't seem to overexert himself, just puts enough effort in to get it done. Like he's a, such a well-rounded, I think like champion data had him like number one player in the comp for a long time. Like wow. he's, I still feel like he's underrated to a certain degree. Like he defends really, really well, which a lot of high half backers probably don't do as well as Sinks does. But if he has to go back, he'll get a fist in. He'll take in like a contested yes. money. He's not tall. It's just like, he's a really, really well-rounded player. And, um, yeah, he's just – his ability to hit targets under pressure and stop and go and, you know, just does most things right for a guy that – it's another great story, a guy that was playing half forward in the graveyard shift and just couldn't get yeah, out of it. Yeah, crazy. And then, his and then goes, goes to half back and dominates. Yeah, not his U-turn as such because he's always been a good player, but in a sense, like now he's like – He's the best halfback in the in the competition. Yeah, like that, like literally. Yeah. He, he's um, also he's so consistent with his um, like disposal count yeah. and like ball use. His yeah. execution's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, and like I said, kicks goals. Like it's, does everything, man. As, like, the, as the mullet, that wears thirty five. He's, he's, he's yeah. taking the piss. Yeah, he's, he's cut, he's cut, yeah exactly. <laughs> he's taking the piss, yeah. <laughs> mate. It's something about that thirty five, but <laughs> yeah, he's like phenomenal. And then like you got other guys like Jack Steele, like he's just hunting around the footy and that kind of thing's crazy. But like I've played with guys that have got that, but like say Zeb, for instance, played mm. a lot of footy with him, like Kamikaze at the footy, yeah. like and just goes so yeah, hard. Yeah, we love Jackie's evil, but. 
didn't run as well as Steely like runs. Mm. Steely runs really, really well. And you just go like he's got a he's got a crazy athletic mix. But actually now it's it's Brad Hill second to none. Oh, it's Brad Hill, because yeah. Because of his level of athleticism, like it's just crazy. Like I don't think people understand how, uh, how good he's I, he I don't is. think I do, but there was an you might recall there was an interview. It, this would have been in the early rounds and we were doing all right, the Saints uh, this year, and he got interviewed. And he was like, he covered some distance in that game. And, and he, he was blowing a little bit, but he, they asked him, like, how are you feeling? He's like, oh, I could go again. I could he, play another quarter. I was like, fuck it, hell. Like, he, that's insane. He's so. crazy. He boxes, like, during the offseason, he boxes every day, he runs every day. Like, if I run two days in a row, I am in <laughs> yeah, agony. Day off. Yeah, <laughs> agony. And he'd be like, oh, mate, like, you know, I just didn't feel like I was where I needed to be. So, like, I'll just run tomorrow. And yeah. Like, and then, but you're going to join it. Yeah, I'll still do Friday. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so like, bro, I'd break down in no time if I had that attitude. He's he's crazy. Like, he can play to his spring 40 at this yeah. rate. Like, he's still athletically way better than everyone else. Um, the sprint repeats, cra- like obviously lightning. Um, and then like people don't, like he was getting tagged on like a wing and goes to half forward, still gets tagged, goes to half back, gets tagged. Like go- mm. everywhere he goes, he gets sat on. And yeah. it's like, that's that's hard for an outside player to get it's sat on no earth. matter what yeah. and probably doesn't get the Does recognition. He get, do you reckon he gets, like, I mean, because we've got a lot of good players, but for some reason I think everyone's a little bit scared when Brad Hill's got the foot in his hands the most, which is because obviously he's such a good ball user and, his athleticism, does he get targeted a lot from opposition more than most people would think because we've got Sinks Sinks, and Steel. Sinks is probably number one. Okay. But when I got here, Hilly was definitely the, yeah, the one week, that right? everybody went after. Yeah. And it was like on a lot of money and not delivering. And I'm like, man, he's got somebody sitting on him and he's an outside. He doesn't have the ability to go and win the footy himself, yeah. which I think gets like overlooked a lot. You're like, you know, he's got to work through it. And it's like, well. Yeah, like it's our ability to get him the footy as well. That's the mm. position that he plays. Like yeah. it's not like, oh, you can chuck him in the middle and he's just going to go win his own footy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got somebody like this yeah, the whole time. It's annoying. It's hard. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how you guys, like it must be playing footy for so long to get used to it. If someone starts doing that in like other sports. Oh, no, you, people don't. I go to the wing so nobody <laughs> yeah. comes comes near me. It's shake yeah. the hand at the start of the <laughs> yeah, game yeah, and yeah. I'll, we'll run 150s <laughs> yeah. and if you don't come near me, I don't come near you. No, yeah. no stress. Yeah, we love yeah. that. We love that. Oh, mate, well, it's good that you're enjoying yourself with the Saints. I mean, what sort of like, how do you sort of go into a, a footy season now? I mean, are you very much a day-by-day bloke, level-headed perspective is what I seem or are you kind of – adventurous in a sense where you set goals and you want to sort of achieve certain certain things that you <laughs> yeah, put out. I guess like at my age, although 30 doesn't feel old in football. It doesn't. It's, well, sort of, it's sort of gets. I mean, pendles and steel. So like I'm forever in the boat of I need to be improving to stay yeah. in the AFL system. But, you know, that's, that's not just football stuff. It's also like what you bring to the group and that mm. kind of thing that you try to build and um, – yeah, as much as I can. Just if I'm improving, I feel like I've still got value at the club, therefore they're going to keep me. So, well, yeah. You won, was it last year or 2022 you won Best Clubman? Yeah, yeah. Last year. Last year, yeah. Oh, what, sorry, yeah. How do they yeah. – like how do they – I mean that's a – that's I don't know if that's a respected enough reward, you know. I think I've spoken about this before with someone who won one, but to be voted Best Clubman, because when you're – especially when like St Kilda this year, we obviously had some great ups, but we had some downs too with like winning and losing. And I think it's really hard to be – you find it's hard for players to stay consistent with their attitude and conversation with everyone and their mood as such when the results aren't fluctuating because that's what dictates the club environment sometimes. Yeah. So that reward's kind of a reflection of someone that's maintained consistency. Yeah. Don't you think? Like, I mean, it all it honestly all comes down to the pure time that you would listed and it's just like <laughs> really? life's not that bad <laughs> ah, there you go yeah it's just it's like perspective yeah it's it actually it, it honestly is like it's yeah. just ne- it's never going to be that bad and i'm doing what i love and like a lot of guys like you can walk past in the hallway and they might not give you too much like i say to a lot of the first years if, if one of the older guys you know isn't giving you the time of the like world he's got a lot of going on like it can be mm. football it can be family like all that kind of stuff but because we cross paths with each other so much like we're not just sitting at a desk or whatever like i said if they if they don't give you heaps it's because it's not no, nothing to do with you yeah. it's just they've got a lot going on and that's just how people operate and i would have been like i've said this multiple times i wouldn't have been a great person at north melbourne because i was just so unbelievably yeah. stressed yeah and you can't be your best self when you're just yeah. like constantly stressed you walk past people and you're like, oh shit, I just walked past that person and didn't like, I was too caught up in my own head, like thinking about Damn. injuries or form or whatever. And it's like, I now have the ability to go like that stuff. 
I'm not so stressed about. So you're able to be more present and therefore have those conversations or, you know, be a better bloke pretty much. Yeah, bloody oath. But it, yeah, like it's hard, you man. just can't take it personally because everybody's dealing with different stuff in the football club. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty, you know what, you're going to be so well read. I don't know if you, because you've never not been a footy player or you have for a little bit, I guess, but four months. like, yeah, yeah, four months. But like, you're going to be, life's going to be pretty easy for you when you get out, mate. Like it's not, it doesn't get, doesn't get harder than what you're in. <laughs> yeah. Like obviously there's, peaks and troughs and career you might have to look like with stuff but like emotionally yeah. like nothing's really as yeah, yeah. as fucking pushes you as hard uh, as what I sport had, does I had like conversations with my dad and my dad interesting man to say the least <laughs> oh, um, yeah, that's a you my friend <laughs> yeah um but yeah like the way that um he's like impacted on me and we've had that relationship but he had a chat and I, I said to him one time like I'm never going to be this stressed in life post-football. And he couldn't understand it. And I said, like, mate, you've got the coaches who somewhat you going well is dependent on their role and yeah. them keeping their job. And yeah, then the correct. people above them need to keep their job. So if the coaches aren't going well, you're not going well, then that affects them. And then you've got 50,000 supporters that – go week in, week out, and their week is dictated to by how well you go. And now they can contact you. And, yeah, like, so and so now they, they can get at you. They can, they can DM they can, you yeah. and drop, <laughs> drop you were a piece of shit yeah, yeah. In, your, in your DMs. Yeah, get a kick. Like, I'm never going to care about <laughs> anything as much as I do right now. And sort of when I dropped that, he was like, oh, he's yeah. probably a little bit out of touch about yeah, how like, how people can get to you. Like, God, I had some bad messages in my last year at North yeah. Melbourne. <laughs> Shocking. Stuff that you wouldn't want to repeat. No, you're I just like- imagine. This guy has obviously had a few too many, and, yeah. you know, late in the year, we've had a rough <laughs> year, and I'm just the, you know, the guy that didn't take the chess mark on the wing that couldn't yeah. believe he dropped it. But oh, mate, Josh Bruce come on and spoke about like getting, I, I, I yeah, getting that, death clear. threats yeah. and stuff. But one of the one of the ones, a guy who wrote him a really disgusting message. The message before was like, mate, you're a superstar. Yeah. It's mate, like, they all come back. Like, mate, I don't yeah. know which one I have. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the same people that will yeah. message you and say how well they think that you're going. <laughs> yeah, also the on one, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like it's yeah. it's. And when you're like, this is more conversations with the kids. Like when you come in, you've got all this, this kid's going to be the next you know, oh, freaking Lance Franklin or next Gary Ablett or whatever. Mm. And they've only heard positivity and they start getting a little bit back and it might be their second, third year and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And you start going, where the hell did this come from? Yeah. You guys were all my best friend and yeah. now you're all on me. You're like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a hard, it's a hard flick. Um, you know, a lot of the guys that we've had that come in might have not experienced that yet because we've had such a good younger group. But True. it's certainly things in the next couple of years that, you know, people's form start going backwards and, and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's a fickle world, AFL football. Well, mate, it is. It's interesting now as other draft, the draft players coming in are like coming in with social media profiles that have like, because yeah, people yeah. watch them now. So yeah, it's private school it's different, kids. Like, it's different like to them. what you've, yeah, yeah. The baseline footy or whatever. They've, yeah. Literally, I'm watching kids kick from the boundary now, yeah. like, Instead of being there, actually, so it's interesting. Yeah, and they're all on podcasts. And yeah, they're podca all, yeah, they're, they're all following the, they're the just prime loving train it. And yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, you want to kick some goals to yeah. it, but no, nah, good on them. It's it's impressive. I've got a couple more before we round out, but I touched on Ross, but just like the the I'm not calling backroom staff, but Ross's sort of coaching stuff is as is as big as names as you get from an AFL perspective, but even like a Saints footy perspective, like what like Robert Harvey, I'm talking of Lenny Hayes. Hey, it's Ruffheads, Jared Ruffheads. Yeah, so, oh, he's, yeah, he's moving to recruiting. But recruit, yeah. yeah, and yeah. then well, who else is there? Corian Wright and uh, Brennan Goddard. Brennan Goddard, yeah. Brennan Goddard used to be my favorite player. Yeah. yeah. Um, like on paper, like the most amazing, That's, you know, it's crazy, assistant coaching man. group that I've ever been a part of, like, yeah. or ever had. Sorry. So it, it's amazing, like, kids coming in and going, like, oh, the resources that we've got, which is unbelievable. But I guess the best thing is, like, you get, a lot of clubs get back old coaches or old, old ex players, but all these guys have been like Lenny's been at GWS and done mm. assistant coaching there, and Harves is just that two I see to every Collingwood uh, coach, co yeah. Colling, like Collingwood yeah. or any any coaching job, uh, head coaching job. He was almost getting yeah. Um, and BJ was at Essendon, and he's been there and come back, and you know Corey Enright was a part of the Cats team until the year before that they won the premiership. So like. Jeez. On paper, that's that's a, an amazing crew to get in back to St Kilda, um, which yeah, it makes coming into the club and like I got 
Lenny as a coach and, you know, you just see all the I love Lenny stuff and he's just the best bloke ever. Yeah, like, is he? Oh, yeah. Man, like, he seems like to, a river. And he hates it. But, like, apparently he hated all the I love Lenny stuff and yeah. that kind of thing. But, like, genuinely you can 100% understand why everybody <laughs> loves Lenny. Oh. He's just the best player. He's got think, so much time, like, all that kind of stuff. I think he's the most loved footy player by, like, every footy club that's played for well, one team, isn't it? respect the way that he like yeah, play. obviously. Yeah. But it's just hard to be that loved. Mm. Like, I can see why it would bother yeah, him too. Are. Because I can't imagine saying anything to anyone on field. It would just would have been like, oh, yeah, there's a ball in between me and you. I'm just going to beat you to it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And absolutely take you out if you're in the way. Like, I think that's why he probably hates being lo- – like, the fact that he hates being maybe so loved, like, which not hates, but – you know, it makes him – is why people love him more because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like oh, he doesn't so, want any so of So modest, wouldn't see like obviously yeah. – like you walk into the club, it's hard not for him to be – and there's like a eight-foot-tall photo of Lenny as you walk in <laughs> and he would walk past uh, it every day before he walks up the stairs to go to his thing. Like, yeah. um, it's like, yeah, it's not It's not Robert Harvey. It's not, you know, yeah. a Nick Rewalt. You know, it's, it's not Brennan Le- Goddard. It's Lenny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I actually haven't spoken to him about that. I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah, that I should. please do. Yeah, let us yeah. know how it goes. So, final one for um, uh, all the unleashed listeners, w- which are out there. And for those of you made it this far in the episode, we love you for it. But uh, <laughs> our merch website is going to be in the bio below. Get on there. We've got the humanized tea, um, the smiley tea, and obviously the hat, which has the saying on the show: "Resilience drive ambition." Because that is uh, sort of one of our questions that we've been running with on the show, and we think all three key for success in life and sport. I kind of probably already know yours. Um, but, you know, I guess the one that – maybe we'll go with the one that probably most relevant to now because I'd say resilience has probably been, you know, pivotal throughout your North journey. But resilience yeah. driver ambition, which one probably resonates to where you're at now in your career? Um, God, they all – They're all – yeah, mate, this is why all, we love this yeah. question because everyone uh, goes everywhere. I think, I think ambition still um, – is a big driving factor for me. And I've talked to one of the big things that I struggled with when I was at North was holding my hat on, like I wanted to be all Australian forward. Like I think most kids would probably have Absolutely. some ideas of what they wanted to be. And But the issue was when I was at North is if I wasn't all Australian, what was I? And I had nothing in between that I could fall to. So if you're not all Australian, you're a failure every single year. And I now, I have a better balance of, I get as much kick out of helping one of the kids with mm. something that they're dealing with um, or somebody that wants to come and have a chat. I get more energy out of that than I'm almost succeeding on my own oh, footy wow. path. So I don't I don't lean into having to have football wins every day as much as I love just having a conversation with somebody about footy and how they want to get better. So and it also feeds into sort of what I want to do post footy as well. So, yeah, what, you, what you want to get into coaching and something? Yeah, like because like, that's I'll, kind I'll of what you're have, doing. Yeah, I hopefully on... have a master's degree by the time I'm finished in high performance. So mixing, you know, all that, but sort of just being a one stop shop for the first of three years, from you know, oh, mentoring to football stuff to, um, you know, potentially helping out with the rehab guys and that kind of thing. But yeah, I just think that those sort of things. Like I'm, I'm working towards obviously still being the best footballer I can be, but I've got something else outside of football that still is motivating in that capacity. That's as well. awesome! Wow, that's so, pretty hard to find, you know. Like to be obviously still playing, you got a bit of an idea of, and in like because you're kind of doing it now. Mm, I've been delisted. Doing it, it will <laughs> fast track everything in your head because you realise how quickly yeah, shit hits the fan. Shit. Like, yeah, it's it's a, a biggest blessing in disguise, but. Yeah, it's um so yeah, still ambitious on where I can get to with my football, but also, you know, life after football as well because it is unbelievably hard to trans- sure, transfer trans- out, yeah, transition but, out of this game because it's yeah. just got so many perks. Yeah, my bloody oath, mate. Well, it's been a joy having you on the show. I reckon the Saints fans would have loved this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've Hopefully done a bit of media, but you haven't done podcasts, so we're, glad, we're grateful to be probably one of your first, if no, not. So no, number one. Yeah, number one. Thanks Are for you, having me. No, mate, appreciate it. For all the uh, everyone at home who tuned in, we appreciate you. Uh, I know we missed last week's episode, but we'll be back next week as well. So make sure you tune in. We'll see you then. <laughs>